everyone. <laughs> I'm back from Edinburgh um, and the Edin Yarn Festival and today um, I'm gonna be talking about that trip. Um, but first things first, you are watching my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and these are my knitting podcast videos. And in today's episode I'm also revealing who won to give away from my previous episode. So if you are new to my channel, um, this channel just turned one year old, or one year old, um, and I had a little giveaway, and it was in collaboration with Spool Stories. So Marilisa from Spool Stories uh, provided me uh, with this um, project pack that she makes herself, so she even waxed to canvas herself. It's really beautiful. And a zipper on top and this strap so you can hold hold it um, in your hand when you're when you're knitting. And also I have uh, three skeins of yarn for the giveaway from a Finnish dyer called Auringo Kehra. Uh, a plant dyed yarn. Um, it is 100% uh, finship wool. And then two skeins from wool and piano um, from Gotland, from Sweden. And this is Gotland sheep wool undyed. So there was this giveaway. Um, and I got so many nice replies. Um, I asked what's your favorite knitting memory or um, what's your favorite thing about knitting because I was talking about how I started to knit and how I became a knitter and why I'm still knitting so why, what keeps me doing <laughs> this what, what are the things about knitting that I love so I wanted to know what it is for you and I felt like I can't really start picking my favorite thing about your favorite thing, so it's not really kind of like fair. So I used um, a random number generator. So I took a uh, copy paste all the top comments and put them in an Excel file. And then I used uh, a random number generator that I found on Google. and. The lucky winner is Tracy Arena. So Tracy um, sent me a message. Um, if you can, um, I think it's the easiest if you send me a message through um, Instagram, like a direct message, or then you can send me email. Um, uh, I need to know your address so I can send you your price. So Tracy is the lucky winner of the giveaway this time, but I want to say thank you to everybody who commented um, on, the, on the giveaway uh, episode. I absolutely loved reading through all your uh, knitting memories and all your favorite things about knitting. And if you ever need some inspiration or if you feel like kind of down, um, I don't like uh, have the knitting mojo. Just go and through, read through all those comments that uh, each and every one of you posted on that uh, previous episode because I absolutely it, it was so wonderful to read all uh, all the things that you love about knitting and and the memories you have connected to knitting. So Tracy send me a message so I can get your prize uh, on the way. And um, if you didn't win, go and check out Spool Stories Etsy shop. She has some wonderful bags over there, really pretty. So uh, definitely worth taking a look and buying yourself one or even, even a couple of project bags. But um, Today I'm gonna be talking about my trip to Edinburgh. So if you didn't make it this year, um, just I thought I would be I would tell you um, how it was and what to expect. Um, 
this was my first year attending. This was my first time attending uh, an international um, knit, knitting festival. Um, or I went to uh, CHSI Stitches in Birmingham earlier this year, but it was a B2B fair, so it wasn't um, like a, for no, normal customers. So it was for business customers. So it's a bit different. So this is this was the first time that uh, I have attended a knitting uh, show outside of Finland. Um, and I'm so happy I got to go. It was such a wonderful experience and I, I really recommend going to Edinburgh if you if you get the chance to go. It's definitely worth visiting. Uh, it was quite as big as I thought it would be. I, I was expecting um, like area wise, I was expecting a bigger venue, so I was a bit surprised to see um, how how small area it actually was, or how many <laughs> vendors you could fit into such a small venue. Um, but it, there was so much to see that even though I attended on all three days, I still think that I didn't see quite everything that was there. I think I have missed some things. And even though the venue was quite small, um, it's really funny that when I went to, like on Friday, um, the second day of the, the festival, uh, in the evening when I went to the hotel, um, and I was looking through my Instagram feed, and I was like, was she there as well? Like a lot of people that I know or that I wanted to meet or or, or I know through Instagram. And I was like, I didn't see her there or or I didn't see them there at, at all. Um, it was like really weird. That there were so many people there, but still you kind of like, you didn't, you, you didn't see everybody. So that was a bit shame. But I did meet so many people, so I think that was um, the best thing about the fair. It's the people, not the yarn, not the knitting. I was actually joking that I can't remember the last time uh, that I have knitted as little as I did during the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, it's quite weird. I go, I go to a knitting fair and then um, <laughs> I don't actually knit at all, but I think that wasn't the case. Um, the hardest thing for me was that um, I wasn't going as myself, so I wasn't going as uh, Sari, uh, the designer, but I was going as um, a representative of, of Novita. So what I was doing there was to check out what new is in the yarn market, what are the trends that um, are now, like what, what is in fashion, what colors, um, what fibers, um, what yarn weights are the most pop popular. And also I was there to meet designers um, because Novita wants to become more international. So that's why we want to have also international designers freelancing for us. So that was one of the reasons that I went to the fair to, to meet people, to make connections and to see the, that this Mar Marlon, uh, our cat, is playing at my feet. So he he's um, playing just uh, under the tripod. So sorry about that. Just try to readjust this a bit. Okay, it's better better again. Uh, anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I was there uh, on behalf of Novita, so I was working there, so that it wasn't, uh, even though it was really fun and almost like leisure, though I was still there um, for work, so that was maybe the hardest thing to actually remember to work and not not just like go around and and do my own stuff and sit and knit and so on. 
So if you are planning to go to uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival uh, next year, here's something that um, you might want to take into consideration. Um, you can either buy the ticket in advance or you can buy them at the door. And I'm not sure when the advance tickets come on sale and how long they are on sale for, but uh, when I got the green light that I was um, allowed to go to Edinburgh, um, the advance tickets weren't available anymore. So this was like two or three weeks before um, the start of the yard festival. So there weren't any advance tickets left at that point. So I'm not sure how long or how many tickets they have on sale um, when the advance tickets come out. But if you have the advance ticket, um, you can go and change it for um, like kind of a bracelet. How about, I'm not sure what you, what you call it, um, that you have around your, your hand. And um, then you can just like walk in and out. If you have that for three days, then you don't have to queue except on the first day to change the, the ticket um, to the bracelet. Um, and if you if you have um, only for one day, then you have to queue for that one day and and change the ticket. But if you don't have the advanced tickets, you have to queue every day. So that was something that um, I was a bit annoyed about. It was a bit irritating for me because I went there on first on Thursday when the when the festival started, and I was quite late there so there wasn't any queue anymore but I think there had been queues or there had been queues not I don't think but there that's, that's a fact there was a queue uh, earlier in the day but um, when I when I got to the ticket office I was like um, I want to buy a ticket for the whole three days and they were like no you can do that uh, you had to buy the ticket every day so you only got to buy a one-day ticket and that meant that you, if you wanted to go on all three days you had to queue in on all three days. You couldn't buy a three-day ticket. Um, so that was quite annoying in my opinion. Um, when I went to Edinburgh um, I left uh, uh, really early um, on Thursday morning so uh, I woke up around 4.30 in the morning and there was a taxi waiting for me at 5 and my flight left at 7 a.m. Uh, I had um, a stop in Amsterdam so I had a 3-4 to four hour transit there and then, then I flew to Edinburgh so I was in Edinburgh around 12.30 um, p.m. Um, also because of the two hour time difference and then I just quickly went to my hotel to to drop off my bags and change clothes and I took the taxi to the, to the um, corn exchange where the, uh, the festival was uh, so I was there around I think it was about 3 p.m. so like I said there was no longer any queue uh, the festival had already started at 10 a.m. Um, but that was for for the advance tickets only, and the ticket office opened at 1 p.m. Um, so the morning for, was only for those who had an advance ticket, and then the rest of the people could come in after 1 p.m. But when I went there at 3, it was quite quiet already, so I quite enjoyed um, walking around and seeing the venue. Um, and I was planning to go there for, for the whole day of Friday. Um, there was a little mishap. Somebody, I heard later that somebody had accidentally turned on the heating system. So the ra all the radiators were really hot. And, and I was wearing a woolen pullover. So I was like sweating over there on Thursday. It was so hot. It was like sweat just running um, 
uh, around my face and my back and it was horrible. I, actually, I got a horrible headache because I forgot to drink enough water. So, but on Friday it was already better. They had turned off the heating and it, it was better over there, even though there were so many more people. Um, but anyway, um, on Friday, again at 10, 10 a.m., the advance ticket holders got to go in and the ticket office opened at 11. So I was prepared for queues, so I went there. I was there a little bit before 10 and there was already um, a queue that was something like 100 meters or something like that. So there were two queues. There was one queue for the advance tickets and one queue for people who had to buy a ticket. And at 10 a.m. they let all the advance ticket holders go in. If you had a three-day ticket bought in advance and you had already been there on Thursday and, and got a bracelet, you just could walk in. You didn't have to queue at all. So that's the reason why you should go and buy the advance tickets if that's uh, possible. But anyway, um, they started to let people in to the ticket office already earlier than 11. So I think it took me about 45 to 50 minutes altogether to queue into the venue. And I was there the whole day. So I left at, I think it was 5.30 when, when it closed. Um, I was there the whole day and it was so much fun. Uh, I met so many really great people. I talked to so many people. And then on Saturday, again, same thing. If you had a ticket in advance, you could go in already at 10. Uh, and if you didn't have a ticket, the office, uh, ticket office opened at 11. So I was there um, around maybe 9.45. Um, and I was quite close to the door, but they started to let people into the ticket office already 20 past 10. So I was there, I was inside the venue already 10.30, so it wasn't that long a wait either. Um, but my flight left uh, on Saturday afternoon, so I had to leave to the airport at 3 p.m. to catch my flight. So I, didn't, I was there only for a couple of hours on Saturday, but it was so, so nice to meet people. Uh, it was such a, such a lovely event. Um, just it's it's been a week um i heard this concept of um post uh, eyf um hangover and i think that's exactly uh, what i've been having um it's like it, first of all the time difference then like the being tired from all the traveling and being tired from all the people and all, all the things that you see. So it's it, it was really exhausting. I, on Sunday when I was back home, I was like, at the same time, I was so tired, but also like so inspired and, and um, w wanting to do everything and uh, like so so much more in energy like creative creative energy and meeting all the people it's, it was so so fun but i think you want to see what i bought from edinburgh um i already made a finnish speaking episode I, I made it immediately on sunday after i came back and i in the beginning of the video, I was going to say that I didn't buy almost anything. So I was holding everything I I bought in my hands and <laughs> quite a lot of it. Um, so many, so many skeins. Um, the problem for me is that I prefer knitting um, sweaters. So when I buy yarn, I usually buy a sweater's worth of yarn and even though I don't have uh, yarn for that many projects because I need a sweater worth of yarn it looks like a lot um, but when I went to Edinburgh I didn't really I didn't 
plan on buying anything. I didn't really have anything like I want to buy this and I want to buy that. I had quite a many things that um, I wanted to see and touch and feel. Um, because um, it, in Finland, you don't, we don't have that many great yarn shops. We have a few, but even they have a limited amount of yarns that uh, they carry. So there are so many beautiful yarns that I have seen uh, on Instagram, for example. But because I have no place to, to see them live, um, for me, and I think for almost everybody who needs, um, it's not just about the brand or the color. It's also about how to yarn reflects light and how how it feels in your hand. Is it is it smooth? Is it rustic? I have a really sensitive skin, so that is also um, an issue for me. That the, the yarns that I buy need to be um, something that I actually can wear against my skin. So. Um, there are so many things that I wanted to see live, and now that I have seen them, um, I can I can order them online later on. So that was uh, something that that um, I wanted wanted to see. Um, but but the day before um, I flew to Scotland, uh, Isolda posted on their Instagram page that. Um, they are having the Harrisville nightshades um, and that's that's a yarn that I've been really interested in. I've been eyeing the yarns on Instagram for the longest of time. I think they're like something that really speaks to me. So that that was like the only thing that I had on my checklist at that point. So I decided okay I need to buy Harrisville Designs nightshades. Then <laughs> uh, I saw the Retrosaria Mondim and La Bien um collaboration and I kind of knew, okay, I need to have that as well. So there were two things. So it was the Nice Shades and the Mondim La Bien Amy collab yarn. Uh, that, that, that was my shopping list. So I decided to, to buy those things immediately on Thursday when I went there and then um, I decided that I won't buy anything else on Thursday so I will go around see everything that is there and on Friday after I have slept um, one night I have had the whole evening and the morning to think about what I have seen um, the things that have uh, like stuck with me I will go and, and buy those things. Um, but here's the, the night shades. I forgot to show it. I'm just talking and I, I forgot to show what I bought. There's actually a fourth skein, but I forgot that in uh, no fifth skein of this. So I bought five skeins uh, to knit a sweater. Um, but I forgot it in Helsinki, so I only have four skeins here. So this is um, the Harrisville Nightshades. They, all the colors are like kind of black, but still not black. So really dark colors. This is the, the black um, mixed with green. So you can see there are these green speckles or no, not speckles really, because it's been like spun into the yarn, um, not like really like dyed. Um, so here's the, the colorway, it's called VCR and this is a DK weight yarn and um, like I said I'm planning to knit a sweater with these, these are 100 gram skeins and they have approximately 250 yards per skein. I think that's something like 225 meters. But these, th these are um, my Harrisville Nightshades babies. And the 
Retrosaria Mondim Labianemi collab is over here. So Mondim and Labian Amy, and this is um, non superwash 100% wool. Uh, it's a sock yarn, but I think you can use it for anything that you want. Um, the color is yellow brick road graffiti, so it's like this really mustardy um, yellow, almost ochre, and it has a little brown and red speckles. So this, these were my shopping list for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And when I slept over the night and came back on Friday, the things that I um, still like was, was talking, the thinking about um, was first of all Gothenor and they make this really lovely organic, uh, quite loosely spun yarn and this is a four ply, so fingering weight yarn, um, the color is called shale and this is the number two um, yarn and this is organic Shetland wool so you can see over there and I really love the gardener yarns things like organic and and um, um, short like short trips from from the farm to the mill um, things like that are really um, important to me so I absolutely I love love these yarns um, I also of this I bought a sweater 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 so it's not everything is here I bought tennis games couple more over there so this is gonna be some kind of sweater I haven't decided yet on the design but just like this it's some light it looks almost like really light beige and in some color some light it looks like like kind of gray but it's like a really beautiful natural shade quite rustic yarn so really excited about this and the second thing was uh, from Fru Balborg. She was such a lovely person. She was there um, with Stephen and Penelope. And this is her um, merino swirl. It's sock yarn. So it's 80% merino superwash and 20% nylon. And the colorway is called Major Thorn. Um, she, I think she had the best colors. Her wool was so beautiful. There were so many like really beautiful uh, different pinks and and like speckled multicolored yarns um, in combination with like deep burgundy, deep yellow, um, more more tonal, more unicolor yarns. So there were. That was my my absolutely favorite um, display of the whole whole festival. And as a person, she was also super lovely. She was there with her husband, and and we had a nice long chat. So this is this is what I bought. I was uh, kind of wanting to buy the more colorful colorful yarns like the, the like hot pink and stuff like that but but then I went for something a bit more muted so so um, something that that um, speaks um, more to my design aesthetics and something that I won't get bored so even though I really enjoy looking at, uh, at the pink skeins I'm not quite sure if I enjoy wearing them as much so I think this um, 
beautiful combination of uh, greens and grays is something that I will most definitely also enjoy wearing. So here's a little close-up of all the colorways. There's even like this almost neon here at, at some, some places. And here are the specs of the yarn if you want to read. So this was a new new yarn for me and I definitely recommend checking her yarns out. Um, I fell in love with them. Um, the only thing I bought on Friday that wasn't planned were these two skeins um, of Exmoor sock from John Arban Textiles. Um, I love these retro uh, etiquettes. So they are the Exmoor sock yarn. And the colorways this is Hemel and this is Measle. And one of the trends that I um, noticed at the festival was the rise of uh, breed specific yarns. So when you previously had like uh, wool yarn and then came alpaca um, and lately um, everybody knows what is merino and nowadays quite many of you already know what is BFL so blue faced lister but um, there are so many more um, sheep breeds and I think the breed specific yarns are something of a trend something that um, um, is is coming and and even this gardener these were marked as Shetland wool so Shetland sheep wool I saw quite a lot of uh, Falkland sheep wool blue faced Leicester of course Merino and even with Merino you like start to write um, okay, this is South African Merino and also kind of like all kinds of Merino blends. So there was Merino Alpaca, there was Merino Silk, um, Merino Linen combinations. Um, and these are actually, you could, you could write that these are 90% wool and 10% uh, nylon, but uh, instead it says 60% Exmoor Blue Feds. 20% Corydale, 10% uh, Swadless, and 10% Nylon. Not sure if I pronounced all the names correctly, but you can check them out there for yourself. And this is exactly the same. So that's something that um, I have noticed that is up and coming, so the breed specific yarns. Um, another thing is of course um, organic yarns, um, non superwash yarns, um, rustic more more rustic after um, a long time of only um, different merino singles, the more like sheep sheep yarns, <laughs> sheep rustic yarns, uh, natural shades are um, becoming more fashionable again. That's something that I, I noticed. Um, another thing that I noticed was, um, of course, there were still uh, quite a lot of those like really colorful um, hand dyed yarns, like all those like rainbow unicorn uh, candy shades, but I think uh, the colorways are starting to become more uh, muted, so um, there are more of the like unicolor, and not like just like just one color, but like those like uh, hand dyed unicolor yarns, more like tonal yarns. Um, there were also a lot of really earthy shades from from like sandy tones all the way to terracotta, uh, rust, a lot of browns, a um, lot of autumn colors, also jewel tones like um, 
um, ruby, um, topaz, like like those colors that are at the same time dark but but rich. Um, so not muted, but like really, really rich, deep colors, deep red, deep green, deep like sea blue, beautiful colors, and a lot of uh, pastels, like frosty pastels and warm pastels. Um, I think like apricot, like soft apricot is something that uh, a lot of a lot of the dyers are making at the moment for something and also like pink pink powder pink clay um, that that kind of like um, like sunrise colors like those pastel pinks and oranges so I think those are something that that are definitely on the rise at the moment very popular um, I was surprised that there wasn't that much mohair. I think in the designing world, mohair is quite prominent at the moment. A lot of designers, myself included, are making mohair patterns. But I was surprised to see that there wasn't more mohair um, on show at the moment. Um, there was some Suri alpaca. That's something that I think is um, trending at the moment. But I was really surprised there. Of course, there was some some mohair, handbag mohairs, and so on. But I was expecting to see more of that. And also, I think the hand dyers are starting to make uh, more um, chunkier yarns as well. So I think the chunky yarns are. are are going to become a huge trend um, next winter um, and also DK weight yarn so not just fingering weight anymore but also also DK so those are kind of the trends that I saw um, that are coming uh, and happening at the moment let's see in a year if I if I predicted the right, but that's something that I uh, I noticed. Um, what else? I have a couple of more things. Um, I have one more yarn to show. Um, after Friday, I had decided I won't buy anything else, but there was something that kept <laughs> coming back to me, like kind of haunting me. And when I decided to, go, to still go um, back on Saturday, I had to go and get it. So it's from Molview Yarns. The most beautiful skein of yarn that I have ever held in my hand. Uh, this was actually really expensive. This is probably the most expensive uh, skein of yarn I have ever bought. It was 35 pounds, so it was pretty expensive. But it's um, their um, Bliss. So this is their signature base it's 50% mulberry silk and 50% extra fine merino and it's uh, hand dyed naturally so this is dyed with ogal and iron you can see all the specs here and it's so beautiful it's really soft it's uh, beautifully shiny the color shifts from um, kind of brownish to, to silvery, uh, almost like light purple, like really light lilac color, and it's so so super beautiful. It's, I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can ever like unwind the skein and cake it up. Um, I bought it, I was planning to use it for a headband, but then I noticed that it's 100 grams and there's 495 meters, so it's a really generous skein. So I was thinking that maybe, just maybe this might be enough for a really lightweight summer top. Um, let's see what I will use this for. Um, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. This is one of the yarns that I was talking about um, at the beginning of the episode. Like, um, 
like I said, that um, you you admire something on Instagram, but before you see it actually live, you don't you don't know how beautiful they are, how wonderful they are, and I'm so so absolutely in love with this this yarn. Um, Moelweave yarns um, stand was, I think it was the most beautiful of the show. The whole collection, the way the stand was set up, it was, it was so beautiful. It was so serene and airy, and even though it was there in the midst of old people, it was like, like this uh, little corner of calmness and peacefulness. It's so beautiful. So. I just had to buy this. If I if I didn't, I, I know I would be regretting it at the moment that I didn't buy it. Um, I also bought a pair of coconut yarn snips. They look like this. Um, so the girls from Line Lane magazine, Yonna, said that um, she has two of these. And I was looking for scissors that you can take on the airplane and she said that she, she has has this and you can take this on airplane and I already had this on airplane from um, Edinburgh through Amsterdam to Helsinki and nobody said anything and they have this beautiful leather um, cover and also the lane girls uh, Jonna and Sini I met them at uh, at the fair and they gave me this beautiful cat pin. They are going to have a set of pins available I think maybe next week and I got a sneak preview uh, one one button already. So this, these are uh, everything I bought from the fair. If you have been watching my videos earlier and if you follow me on Instagram you have probably seen me knitting my Edinburgh festival sweater and I managed to finish it just in time so it was like a really close call and I knitted this um, with Novita Nordic wool the colorway is called Squirrel and um, like I said I left for Amsterdam <laughs> Edinburgh um, on Thursday morning uh, on Tuesday morning I didn't have any sleeves um, so I spent the whole evening Tuesday and I finished one sleeve during that time but then um, there were so many things I had to do on on Wednesday like pack and and so on um, that I didn't finish the second sleeve and I still had the neckline to do and also when I left uh, the work I realized that um, I forgot to take extra skeins of yarn with me so I only had half a skein and I had more than half a sleeve and a neckband to do and I was so pissed <laughs> but then my knitting friend told me that I could go to Sokos in Helsinki Centrum and they carry Novita so I went there and <laughs> bought two more skeins uh, just to be safe. Luckily they had the same um, dye lot than the one that I was using so there was no difference between the skeins. So on the plane from um, Helsinki to Amsterdam and during my transit time in Amsterdam I finished knitting the second sleeve and also the neckband and during the last flight from Amsterdam to Edinburgh it was um, a bit over uh, one hour uh, I seamed the neckband, I seamed um, the, the sleeves and I wove in all the yarn and so I was done maybe 20 minutes <laughs> before we landed uh, in Edinburgh so I was cutting it really close and then I was like really uh, um, crossing my fingers that my hotel, hotel room would have an iron otherwise you know how how seed stitch looks like straight off the needles and and it's like really it, it draws together it's not that pretty and I had already blocked 
the first um, sleeve. So I was afraid that I have one sleeve that is blocked and one sleeve uh, that is unblocked. That is like the other one is really relaxed and beautiful and the, the second one just like draws together. But there was um, an iron with the steam function in my hotel room so I could steam iron the sweater and the shoulder, she shoulder seams before going to, fest to the festival. So I was able to wear this, this sweater. Uh, I'm calling it Sylvia pullover. So it has this like all over cable and seed stitch pattern and um, neckband that is folded double. So it looks really finished and quite dropped shoulders and it's a bit oversized fit. And the pattern is going to be in the summer issue of Novita magazine. So the yarn company that I work for makes its own magazine. Uh, it, it's at the moment, it's only in Finnish and in Swedish. But um, part of the patterns that are in the magazines will be translated into English and they are available for free on the Novita Knits website. So this Sylvia pullover will be um, in the next issue, the, the autumn issue of Novita magazine. And since I prefer uh, writing patterns to English, in English um, compared to writing them in Finnish, um, uh, the um, pattern will most definitely be available. Um, on the Novita Knits website later in the fall in in English. So if you want to knit your own Sylvia pullover, the pattern is coming out later this year. And like I said, it's it's going to be available for free. So you can knit your own own Sylvia pullover. I think that was pretty much everything. Um, I was planning to say about the festival. Um, like I said in the beginning, um, if you have the chance to go, go. <laughs> um, I definitely want to go next year. If I only have the chance to go, I, I will be going. I will buy the tickets in advance. I was joking with one friend at the festival that it's actually um, easier to buy the plane tickets than the advance tickets. So I'm going to buy the advance tickets and if it happens that I can't go, then I, I'm i sure I can sell them to somebody. So I'm most definitely buying the advance tickets next year. Also, there are like other events. Of course, there are uh, courses. So um, there are like shawl knitting courses and so on. And then they have these knit night events that you also have to buy the ticket uh, for beforehand. And because I didn't know I was going uh, until very last minute, of course, I didn't get the knit night tickets either. So that's something that um, I want to remember next year. And also um, the, the festival uh, is for three days, so from Thursday to Saturday, but on Sunday they have uh, another event that you only get in with an advance ticket. And I think it's more about like producing wool and like for makers, like wool makers and, and so on designers. So that's something that um, is, is something that I want to be part of next year. Um, it really isn't even about the yarn. It's not about the festival. It's it's about the people. I already said this in the Finnish speaking episode, but but during those three days in in Edinburgh, I it really hit me that this is something that that I belong to, and this is something that. I really want to do it's it's such an amazing 
thing to be a part of um, this whole community. Um, like you, you can just like walk there and and compliment somebody on on their knitwear and ask them what yarn they used, and suddenly you notice that you are are talking to a complete stranger and you get along marvelously. Um, such an amazing feeling to meet all the people like like for example uh, I first met Mimi uh, who is uh, Leaped uh, on Instagram and she has the Yarn Chicks podcast and and um, I met her last summer in US Kilanit Festival and I met her again now uh, in Edinburgh and it was so lovely to hang out with her and she introduced me to her friends and on Friday we went to dinner together and so the, the whole community is so wonderful and all the people I have met through knitting and through yarn and it's like from different age groups, different backgrounds, different nationalities. Um, like the thing that connects us is um, the striving to make beautiful things with our hands and, and yarn and needles or hooks. Um, to be a part of this community is something that I I value a lot. Uh, it has given me so much, and um, I'm starting to cry. Um, I just I, I I struggle to find the words to describe how, what what knitting and this whole community means to me and. I have known that I love to knit and I have known that I love to design and make make designs but this past three months after I started working for Novita and I started doing this full time and then, then I got to go to to Edinburgh and meet so many like-minded people and, and feel all the inspiration and all the passion of all those people. For the first time in so many years, I actually um, I feel like <laughs> I'm on the right track. Um, I feel like I have found my place and my like my direction in in life. Um, I'm just so, so overwhelmed about about all this. Yes, so if you if you have the chance to go to, to Edinburgh or some other yarn festival, um, take that chance, go there, um, meet all the people, see all the yarns. Um, I'm gonna be going to um, Yveskula again this summer and I have already set up um, like dates with, with people. I want to see so if you are going send me a message and let's meet up in US Gula in July um, but yes uh, Edinburgh was wonderful that's that's like all, all, uh, all I can say um, I want to thank everybody who I saw in Edinburgh, everybody who came to talk to me, um, it meant a lot to me and and I'm really sad that I didn't get to see everybody um, I was planning to see. I don't know how it's possible that you're in the same place but probably I was just looking at the yarn and I forgot to, to look up and see, see people around me so I'm sad that I didn't get to see all the people that I wanted to see, but but in the next event, um, but yeah, this turned out to be a bit longer episode that I was planning to to film, um, 
but um, thank you for watching and in case you still want to see all the yarns together minus a couple of extra skeins that um, I left in Helsinki so if you want to see what I think is a modest Edinburgh yarn hole just wait a couple of seconds I still need to find time to knit all of this so this plus one night's nightshades and a couple of of um, gathering skeins is my Edinburgh yarn hole so if I'm going next year um, note to self buy a, a bigger suitcase or or take less stuff with you so that's everything see you